Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm GB and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. So today I am finally doing another declutter video. It's definitely been a while since the last one. I think it might've been beginning of this year, something like that. And I have most definitely uh, built up quite a collection of puzzles that I just need to get rid of, that need to leave and find new homes. I've got quite a mix here, all different brands and types and things like that. And I'm just decluttering them for a whole bunch of different reasons, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, and I'll probably donate a bunch to charity, um, give some to other puzzlers, try and sell some. And I'll also be taking some with to a uh, local uh, Sydney swap meet social event coming up soon, which I'll leave the details for in the description box below in case you're in the Sydney, New South Wales area and you want to attend. Um, but I think without delay, let's uh, go through them all. I'm not gonna spend too long uh, talking about each puzzle because we have a lot to get through. So I'm mainly just gonna tell you why I'm decluttering it. I'm not gonna spend too long discussing or like describing the image on the front, but I will pop an image of each puzzle in this space up here. Uh, also, I'll pop a link in the cards above to the previous declutter video. And if you've seen that, or if you go to watch it, you might notice I'm actually wearing the same shirt. So maybe I'm starting a bit of a declutter sh shirt tradition here. We'll have to see if I end up doing the same thing in the next declutter video, whenever that's gonna be. Um, so let's yeah start going through these. So the first one I've got here is by uh, an Australian company called Soy Lane Society and the puzzle is called Lone Pony by the artist Pony Gold and it's 1000 pieces and it is a really gorgeous image. That's kind of why I got it and also because I wanted to support like a local small like indie puzzle company um, and I had high hopes but unfortunately uh, if you saw my video on this again I'll link that up the top. Um, you spoilers will know that I really didn't have a great time with this. I really wanted to like it but I just had uh, like a really tough time putting it together. It was really difficult and took so long, mainly because there were just a ridiculous like amount of false fits, probably more false fits than any puzzle I've done before. So yeah, it was like a little bit mind blowing actually and really hurt my brain too. <laughs> so yeah, a bit of a pity, um, but I'm hoping someone out there might enjoy putting it together and the false fits might not bother them. And I'm not talking just a few false fits, like I'm talking a lot. Um, but anyway, so a bit of a pity, but I'm, you know, glad to be letting it go and hopefully it'll find a new home out there somewhere. And then next up is <laughs> another one that I really uh, had a rough time with, which I also did a video on. I'll link that up there. I don't know how many videos I can link in the cards, but I guess we'll find out. Um, so this is by Betico and it's called Gradient Splatter Puzzle 1000 Pieces. Um, and it's a, I mean, again, a gorgeous image, like kind of wraps around the sides, really beautiful, but it was really challenge, challenging to put together, um, mainly cause it's like kind of a bit, well, it's only really got two or three colors, like shades of blue, kind of this pale bubblegum pink and a bit of like white. So it actually ended up being really tricky, uh, even with like these sort of distinct like bubbles and shapes in it. But the other thing was, um, there were quite a, I, I think like I, got kind of a bad batch in a weird way because there were just a lot of damaged pieces, including like bits that were a bit ripped off the pieces in this one, which so that was a bit of a pity because um, I know a lot of people really like this brand, but unfortunately like my experience with this one, which was also my first time doing this brand, kind of put me off. I do have another puzzle by them, which I really should try out sometime. But yeah, so that was a bit unfortunate um, and, and yeah, it has made me a bit not keen to try the brand, I don't think didn't feel like it was that special, even like trying to sort of put aside any damaged bits, like not think about those. I still found like it wasn't that like amazing. I was a bit confused why everyone was sort of raving about the brand, but you know, I, yeah. So I think I should still try another one from them and see what all the fuss is about. But yeah, so maybe someone else will enjoy this one um, or are looking for a challenging puzzle and yeah, so maybe Maybe we can give it to someone else who likes torturing themselves like me. Um, and then next I've got a couple here from the brand Hinkler, which I think is like an Australian publishing company, although they're available in other countries in the world like UK. So this one is 1000 pieces called Vintage Puzzle Mushrooms. And yeah, it's like um, this fun puzzle with lots of colorful sort of uh, very like, what would you call it? Like realistically, 
uh, like like you'd find in a science type book or encyclopedia or something where the images are quite like realistically drawn, like illustrated. And it's even got like the little numbers, so it probably is taken from something like that. Um, I can't remember the like proper term for that sort of like very realistic. Uh, yeah, I, I can't think of what it is. If you know, let me know. But yeah, it, it's really pretty. I love the way mushrooms look. I always think they look really cool. And um, yeah, it's got cute uh, like little ornate vintage kind of signage saying mushrooms there. And it does actually have in very tiny text like what each one's called, but it's so tiny I can't read it. Anyway, I enjoyed this puzzle. It was fun. Um, but I just don't really see myself doing it again. There's really nothing wrong with this one. Um, Hinkler here are a more affordable, pretty affordable brand. So the quality isn't like ridiculously amazing, but for the price, I think it's fine. Um, they're just very, I guess, are they thinner? I don't know, let's find out. I mean, they even come in a Ziploc bag, which is kind of cool, but yeah, they're just like, mm, yeah, thin to medium, kind of cardboardy shiny pieces but nothing too wrong and they actually hold together all right so actually don't really have too many complaints about Hinkler I think they're pretty good for the price a nice affordable brand you can get in Kmart and discount bookstores and stuff um, but yeah I've done it and I just don't think I've had it for a while and I haven't done it again so I think it's time for it to uh, move on and then that's kind of the same for the next one which is a 1500 piece one um, it's sort of part of their it's by Hinkler but it's mind bogglers like i guess they have a few different sort of sub series um and it's the klimt collection it's sort of this oh it's gold foil as well and it's a like a triptych kind of design like a three panel design featuring three different klimt artworks and it's, it's beautiful it's really stunning um, the gold foil is really nice um yeah it's pretty reasonable quality for the price like the other one um i think these two are actually gifted to me from hinkler from memory but yeah i've done this one it was reasonably challenging, partly because it's like a bigger size, but also just there's so much little detail. I think if any of you have done a Klimt puzzle, you'll know why they're challenging. Like there's just, they're just tricky and uh, yeah, but it looked really stunning. Definitely loved how it looked. Um, but yeah, again, I just have had it for a while now and I haven't re gone like reached for it. So I think it's time for it to go to a new home as well. And then we've got a couple here from Treffle. So this one is 1000 pieces and what's it called? Uh, Happy Cats. And it's just a very colorful, bright, cheery puzzle. I did it not too long ago actually of all these cats getting up to mischief. Um, yeah, it's pretty fun and cute, but I've kind of like since, I mean, I, got, I think I got this one not super like on super sale. So I didn't spend a lot on it and got it cause it was cats, but I'm not like in love with it. Um, I mean, the cats are very cute but it's not my favorite kind of cat puzzle. I have so many other cat puzzles that I love so much more. Um, it's kind of fun to do, but the, I'm not a huge fan of truffle pieces. I know a lot of people really like truffle, but they're just not quite my favorite. They actually remind me a bit of Clementoni, which I have a, I kind of put up with Clementoni because I like some of their designs. And I guess I sort of, this sort of falls in that category where I find the pieces both on Clementoni and truffle to be kind of a loose fit. They have a nice gray board finish and actually the quality, they feel like they're nice quality. Like they usually have a, they, they feel sturdy. They don't feel too cheaply made, but I still have a few issues with these. Like, like I said, loose fit. Sometimes I've found uh, like in both of these that the pieces aren't cut all the way through or a little bit like stuck sort of gray cardboard backing is a little bit stuck together or a bit ripped. Um, and also oddly these have like a linen finish like that sort of little cross hair kind of texture, but they're still kind of glossy, so which is weird. I'm like, shouldn't it be matte? But yeah, so there's some things I don't like about it. Also the Gigantron box, like it really could be half this size, probably even smaller, but yeah, it feels like, I think it's bigger than Ravensburger, so it's a bit ridiculous. Anyway, so time to let go of this one. And pretty much I have the same feelings about this one. Uh, this one's a 1500 piece one and it is, flowers in vases um I mean, again it's a really fun colorful pretty image but the image is kind of just a bit like it doesn't excite me i you know i did it enjoyed it for what it was but pretty much had the same things in about the quality or pieces that kind of bother me loose fit some bits still sort of not cut all the way through and and yeah and just the images to me is a bit like eh it's fun but yeah so this one can go to a new home as well 
And then last one of this pile, we have a lot more piles to get through, is another one I did a video on. Pop that up there. I don't, again, I, we're gonna run out of cards, I think. Um, this one is by Eurographics called Cookie Party, and I really love the image. I think it's like super cute, and I really love this fancy little embossed tin, the ASMR there for you. Love how it's got the you know image wrapping around the size of the tin. Yeah, it's super fun, colorful. Um, I enjoyed the image, but actually this particular Eurographics has very like, I think it was like very uh, thin, loose fitting pieces, and I think they were quite glossy. Let's see if I can like, yeah, they're pretty glossy. So, I mean, they come in a reusable bag and a nice tin and a poster, so it has things going for it. But again, I just haven't reached to do it again and I haven't really felt like doing it. And I think I was just a bit put off like for, like by these ones in tins because of the loose fit. I didn't like enjoy it. Thankfully, not all Eurographics are like this. Eurographics are kind of weird. It's so hard to tell what type you're going to get. Like I've got ones that are in the regular sort of cardboard puzzle boxes and they some of those fit loosely together. Some fit really snugly together. Some have uh, grid cut pieces. Some have irregular pieces like this one. It's like it's kind of a bit of a lucky dip as to who knows which type you're going to get. <laughs> But they have some beautiful images. I do really, you know, I still like them because of that. And I'm always still willing to give them a chance because maybe I'll get lucky and get the uh, a fit that is nice and not loose like this. So yeah, basically just getting rid of it because I just, just didn't enjoy the quality and fit of it. So yeah, a bit of a pity because it's such a cute, fun image otherwise. So hopefully someone else can enjoy this one. Okay, let's go through the next pile. So this first one is from the MCA Australia, which was gifted to me to try out. So MCA stands for Museum of Contemporary Art. And yeah, it's this uh, round 1000 piece puzzle by the artist Doug Akin, or I guess he's a photographer in this instance. Um, yeah, so not really my kind of image. I don't usually do a lot of photography puzzles, especially not sort of like landscape ones, but it was, you know, interesting to do, fun to sort of try out. Um, but I don't really see myself doing it again, so I figure why not, you know, maybe pass it on to another puzzler in Australia that might be interested in doing it, or who's a fan of the artist, something like that. But yeah, I think it was an, it was an alright puzzle. The pieces were a bit uh, glossy and like on the looser side. I think they had like a white paper backing, but um, the quality was okay. Again, not my favourite, but overall it was a you know enjoyable experience. So yeah, nothing really wrong with this one. I just don't really see myself doing it again. And then we've got one here from, which I haven't done for ages. Um, this is by Peter Popper Press and it's called Garden Cat and it's 1000 pieces and it's quite a cute kind of little painted, uh, very gardeny scene with a little cat hiding in it. So very cute and a really pretty image. I remember it being uh, pretty tricky to do with all the plants, but unfortunately the reason why I'm decluttering this one is, well, one, I just don't see myself doing it again, but the main reason is some of the pieces in this were kind of damaged in the sense that um, I don't know if you've ever had a puzzle like this where it's like the cutting is off and so some sections of like your piece are so thin that they end up like little bits end up breaking off your piece so that happened a little bit in this one um, and kind of put me off the brand for a while but I have since bought a couple things on the brand so I'm like willing to try it out again I mean it was probably just you know a one-off situation or a small batch of them. I don't think the whole brand is probably like this. But apart from that though, the pieces were pretty nice. Like, I think they were like a, let's have a look. I always forget. Um, oh, okay. They're kind of a linen finish, but sort of a glossy finish and have a nice gray board. So overall they look like nice quality and nice thickness. But yeah, some of them had, uh, were just cut a bit oddly and end up having bits of the piece like break off which was a bit disappointing so I think they're all somewhere in there but they're kind of it's kind of the situation where you can't quite glue them back on because there's nothing to attach it back to unfortunately but um yeah so a bit of a pity about that um and I'm hoping that my next experience with the brand will be much better um and then next up we've got one that I actually haven't done just because uh someone gave it to me and I thought I was going to do it but then I just never sort of got around to it and it's just not really like it's so if you look at the background behind me this is just like this ain't it <laughs> this is so like dark and gray and browns and not at all colorful and i mean it's a sort of like fun take on the mona lisa uh, this is from typo i forgot to say and it's 1000 pieces um 
I've only ever done a tiny weeny puzzle from them, which was okay quality, so I actually have no idea, but yeah, so never been done. Um, I'm sure someone will enjoy it, but having done like a couple of Mona Lisa puzzles before, I'm just like, I've done enough of them. They're like kind of boring colored and I just don't really want to do another one, even though it's kind of a fun image, but yeah. So hopefully someone else might enjoy it. And then the other one from Typo is one I think you probably saw me do recently in a roundup was this fun little 100 piece shaped kind of like ramen one. It doesn't really have a name, but I'm going to call it the ramen puzzle. And I guess it's kind of round because the bowl is round, but yeah, it was just a fun, quick little one to do. Um, but yeah, did it, enjoyed it. Time for it to go to a new home. Um, no, nothing really wrong with it. The pieces sort of sometimes stay together. The quality was okay for what it was. It's just a little novelty stocking stuffer type puzzle. Um, so the pieces were actually surprisingly all right quality, but a bit on the loose side and paper backing and all that, but yeah, nothing wrong with it. Just a cute little puzzle, but time for it to, you know, go visit someone else. <laughs> and then next up we've got a 500 piece one from Fred or Genuine Fred. Um, and basically this one, I'm just kind of not really digging the image. I have done it. It's very, I guess, bright and colorful and very summery and quite cheery, but actually I think the image is like, I guess goes that way maybe. Um, you know, I think like someone out there probably enjoy it more than me, but yeah, it's just, I think I got it like on a really reduced price. This is something I need to stop doing by the way. And I'm gonna, I've been trying to, to stop buying things just because they're on sale and stop being lured in and suck it into things just because they're cheap or a good deal. Um, which was the case with this one. So yeah, I think I've done it. I really don't see myself doing it again. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the quality. The pieces are like nice. They fit together well. They're kind of matte. Yeah, I, I quite like the genuine Fred puzzles and pieces and quality, but yeah, just not into this image. And then what else we got? Oh, okay, we've got this one here. It is by Printwork, so it's my first time trying them and my only one I've done. It's called Dawn and it's a 500 piece puzzle inspired by Mother Nature. Um, one disappointingly when I got it, it had like, it's got this sort of cut through the middle where I think like so it's been at the top of a packing box and someone's just like used a like cutting knife to open the box and unfortunately sliced it down the middle. I mean, it's still, holds together, it's just a slice through the box. That's so a bit disappointing. Can't really kind of sell it or anything. So it'll probably just get given away or something like that. Um, the image is quite nice. It's this like pretty gradient sky, like suns, well, dawn, I guess, isn't it? Cause it's called dawn, GB, um, with these clouds. But yeah, I just actually didn't really like the quality. It's so like glossy and such a loose fit. Like you cannot pick up sections at all. Just very crumbly. And um, if you're not doing it under like great lighting it's the gradient is very subtle and there were definitely i didn't have too many false fits but i know someone else who had a lot of false fits with this so i think if your lighting is a bit tricky then you might get false fits so yeah i'm not wasn't super impressed with the brand i think they have some cool images though but yeah for me i'm like eh, at least I, I did get it on sales if so if nothing else i didn't pay too much for it um but yeah i think uh probably the first and last time i'm really gonna do this brand so yeah, that was interesting to try, no regrets, and uh, off it goes to a new home. So the next one is from Springbok, and it's a 500 piece one, um, and it is called uh, Strolling Ephesus. And I've actually done this one a good couple of times and quite enjoyed it, definitely nothing wrong with it. Your sort of classic uh, thick cardboardy Springbok irregular shaped pieces, so quite fun. I mean, the box is a bit sort of on the, I guess, cheaper side, but I you know, I guess that's just how a lot of their boxes are, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, but I just don't really see myself doing it again. I sort of done it enough to satisfy. So yeah, definitely, um, you know, had fun and I think someone else will enjoy it too. And then the next one <laughs> I've also done a couple of times. So this is a Ravensburger one, 500 piece puzzle. And what is it called? Trendy, which I find so weird because it's a cat and it says meow. Shouldn't say like trendy cat, something like that. I don't know. Anyway, this is actually one that I got from or did in a like state, you know, puzzling speed competition. So we, this is the puzzle we did and you got to take it home. So um, I've actually done it twice because I did one there and it was missing a piece and then they gave me a brand new sealed one to take home. So I did it again here so I could like 
do it and take a photo of the final one. So I guess technically I've done this box, the one in this box once, but I've done this design twice. Um, but also, it, I mean, it's kind of cute, but it's not really my colors. And I just don't really, again, see myself doing this, but you know, classic Ravensburger quality in pieces. Um, doesn't have the large pieces. It's sort of like the normal small Ravensburger size pieces, even though it's 500 piece puzzle. But you know, I think someone will enjoy this one too. And then the last one from this pile is a Clementoni one and it's 500 pieces and what are you called? Orient Dream. And it's this sort of, I, I suspect it's Japanese because it looks like a very Japanese little pagoda here. Um, but yeah, beautiful autumn colors. This was a pretty tricky one to put together. Um, and yeah, since doing it, I'm like, eh, I don't think I'm gonna do it again because it's tricky for a 500 piece and also I got a bit bored of the image. I did it, enjoyed it, and now I'm like, uh, time to move on. But I think it's still quite a, you know, beautiful, elegant kind of image and someone out there will probably enjoy it. So yeah, um, so yeah, I feel a little bit uh, similar about Clementoni as I do Treffle. Um, they always seem to be like kind of nice quality feeling pieces, but then the fit of the pieces is loose sometimes. <laughs> Um, I've had like a slightly different experience with some of their color boom puzzles. They seem to be a little bit different in that, but yeah, like uh, a lot of their puzzles, the pieces are a loose fit, but then they feel nice and thick and they have gray board and, um, and kind of have like, let's have a look. Yeah, they have, yeah, like they have that sort of linen finish, but again, not completely matte. What's with all these puzzles that have like a linen texture, but then they're, they're glossy, but they have a nice gray board and they're like kind of medium nice thickness so uh, they also have kind of big boxes like <laughs> look at this <laughs> really um but yeah so i just don't see myself doing it nothing particularly wrong with it at all just you know not i guess my most favorite quality but it, you know it's all right and yeah nice image but kind of over it so that's it for that pile so let's check out some more puzzles we've got a bunch of uh, buffalo games in this stack here. So let's go through those. Uh, this first one is 1500 pieces and it's called Tropical Island Holiday. And there's actually nothing at all wrong with this one. I've done it, I enjoyed it, but I don't really see myself doing it again. Maybe partly because it is a larger piece count, which means I always have to get out my bigger puzzle board and that takes up a lot of space and is a bit impractical, but what can you do when you have a tiny weeny, uh, not at all suitable round puzzling table? So. <laughs> But anyway, it is a really fun image. It's yeah, really colorful, definitely enjoyed it. Um, and you know, sort of classic Buffalo games quality, um, but you know, it's time for it to go find a new home as well. And then we've got a whole bunch more Buffalo games ones here. So we've got a 1000 piece one here uh, called Rainbow City, part of the Vivid collection. And it's by, uh, is it Ciro Machetti? Ciro Machetti? I apologize. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, the artist does a lot of very fantasy, like very beautiful images. And um, yeah, this one was a really gorgeous and fun to do and very colorful and has rainbows and things. Um, but I have, you know, quite a few puzzles by him and I even have another puzzle that's kind of quite similar feel and look to this one, like a lot of similar elements. So I kind of feel like I can kind of part with one, but yeah, enjoyed it for what it was. Um, I've, yeah, like I said, I got a bunch more by him and they get a bit samey after the after a while. So I don't think I need to redo this one. Let someone else enjoy it. Um, and then got another 1000 piece one here. This is called, uh, it's part of the night and day series and it's called Beach Holiday. Um, who's it by? Jeff Haney. I don't actually know who that is, but they definitely do some cute artwork. So yeah, this is a really colorful, fun one as well. Um, a lot of yeah, the details going on. Feels a little bit like Amy Stewart puzzles. Kind of has that vibe. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it too. But again, like I just have. Well, speaking of Amy Stewart, I have a ton of her puzzles in Buffalo Games to do. Um, I have I just a ton of Buffalo Games ones to still do. So, you know, I think if I don't completely love the image and I've done it, might as well pass it on for someone else to enjoy. Um, but yeah, had fun doing it. I think it's really fun and cute, kind of a, quite a pretty image, but yeah, time for someone else to do it. And then this next one I did not that long ago, maybe a couple months at least now. It's a 750 piece one and it's by, it's part of the Cities in Color range and it's called Mademoiselle Cat. 
And yes, this really cute little cat puzzle in Paris and very pretty with flowers and stuff. Um, and actually, if you remember back to that truffle puzzle with the flowers in the vases from just earlier in this video, it's actually by the same sort of artist or group of, group of artists. I've actually got a few puzzles that feature like, I think it's the exact same vase of flowers here that's in that other truffle puzzle. Kind of funny, but I guess they recycle elements from a lot of their artworks, but it's very pretty and just a lovely image, but um, yeah, I don't really think I'm gonna do it again. Um, again, nothing wrong with any of this quality. If you just classic Buffalo games quality, um, pieces fit together pretty snugly, gray board, they're sometimes a bit on the glossy side um, and they do have a bit of puzzle dust, but overall um, pretty nice. Like, you know, reasonable, I guess, especially if you're in the US actually, I think Buffalo Games is a very affordable brand a lot of the time, they have a lot of sales. Here they're a bit more expensive, especially because we have to get them usually on Amazon, so they can be a bit more pricey. Uh, but they do have some really, like they have so many designs to choose from and they have like, yeah, a lot of really gorgeous designs. Um, and speaking of which, I just have so many other gorgeous designs from Buffalo Games to do. So yeah, I just don't need to hang on to ones unnecessarily, I guess. And then we've got a couple more here from Buffalo Games. We've got another very pretty one, which I've done a couple of times. Uh, 500 pieces and it's part of their Amazing Nature series called Hummingbird Garden. And it's actually got like little hidden, 14 hidden images. I don't even know if I found them all, but um, maybe. I, sometimes with these like puzzles with hidden images, I sort of get so into the puzzling that I just forget that there's hidden images and then have pulled it apart by the time I realize. So, oh well, I guess that uh, novelty is a bit lost on me. But yeah, it's a really cute, just a really pretty hummingbird puzzle. I've got actually quite a few sort of hummingbird puzzles and um, yeah, I enjoyed this one, but I have like a lot of sort of, I end up getting, because I end up going through phases of liking certain things, I guess, maybe some of you can relate. You end up with a lot of puzzles that end up looking very samey or have similar themes or even by the same artists. So yeah, I think I have enough other puzzles that are kind of feel this hummingbird floral need. I don't really uh, feel the need to hold on to this one, but yeah, I enjoyed it. And yeah, really cute little 500 piece one. And then the last one I have here from Buffalo Games is a Josie Lewis one called Slither. Um, did I say it was 500 pieces? It's 500 pieces. It's also very colorful and fun and cheery. And she does lots of like kind of rainbow colorful stuff. So I really quite like a lot of her designs. Um, but I actually feel like this is probably one of my least favorite of hers. I probably like some of her other ones just more, like especially some of her geometric shaped ones or more painty ones. Whereas this one was actually quite tricky for a 500 piece one. It was, took a while to put together, but um, yeah, but nothing wrong with it. Just, um, I guess I've done it and satisfied and don't really want to do it again. So off it goes. And then, oh, I'm just gonna punch the table apparently. Uh, I've got a couple here from Masterpieces, but they're not the sort of usual normal 1000 pieces from Masterpieces. So this first one is, well, 1000 pieces, but it's by part of their Contours series called Tropical Menagerie. So Menagerie, Tropical Menagerie. And it's a shaped fish shaped puzzle and actually has like a grand total of three whimsy pieces in it. Wow. Um, so this, uh, I don't, I, again, I don't really know why I got it. I question, sometimes question my past choices and this is one of these questionable acts. Um, yeah, lovely rainbow colorful fish, but it's very kitsch, very eighties. Um, it's a bit, it's pretty daggy, um, but you know, it was fun to put together, I guess. But yeah, I was a bit disappointed with the quality in this. Like I've definitely done some other sort of normal rectangle masterpieces puzzles and they were pretty nice, like linen finish and matte linen finish and held together really nicely. But this one was like, the pieces were, I guess a weird cut because it's a shaped puzzle, but very glossy, a very loose fit. Yeah, they just weren't my favorite at all, kind of thin. I think there was even like a fair bit of puzzle dust. So I guess maybe for the contour series, they have to like, they have to use a different manufacturer or different machines and maybe different like sort of cardboard stock to make the puzzles. So yeah, it's definitely not a reflection of the, I guess a lot of the brands puzzles, but yeah, unfortunately these contour ones, I don't think I'll be trying any more of them because they just, they're not it. So the next one is also a masterpieces one. 
and I haven't done it in a really long time, like we're talking years. Um, there was a point in time where I was quite into mystery puzzles and had like an Agatha Christie one and this one and this other one. Um, I was sort of holding onto it to see if I would do it again, but I just haven't, so I just don't think it's gonna happen. Um, so this one's the yeah, Mythic Mazes 1000 piece puzzle. Um, and it's like, it says Escape from Merlin's Dungeon. And it says uh, 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle with a hidden maze. And it even comes with like this little red plastic see-through disc thing. And it says, includes decoder disc, uh, reveal the hidden clues to help you escape the maze. So it's like this sort of cartoony escape maze mystery type puzzle. Um, I'm sure I probably thoroughly enjoyed it when I did it because um, I was quite into these sorts of things and I'm sure it was quite fun. But now looking at it, I'm like, eh, I'm not really that into the art style um, and I just haven't done it. Um, so I can't really like comment on the quality of the pieces, but it was probably fine. I don't know. Um, Cause I guess it's just a rectangle shape really. So it's probably fine. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I just, don't, again, don't see myself doing it. And so let someone else enjoy this one. And then the last one for this stack, we have one more stack after this and hopefully then we'll be done, is a, oh, pop the lid back on. So this is another sort of mystery puzzle, map mysteries, mystery jigsaw puzzle, 1000 pieces, also contains a magnifier, whatever that is. And I think it's by, who are you by? Um, University Games Corporation, I think. Does it have like anything else on it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know that company. Oh, actually in in the corner here in like very tiny, like a very tiny logo, it's got the Bepuzzled logo. So I guess that university games, whatever it is, is Bepuzzled or owns Bepuzzled. Um, yeah, so this is like a kind of Egyptian, it's called Egypt. And it's like, I guess a sort of Egyptian map and other things, some sort of mystery puzzle. Um, probably really enjoyed it because I used to like ancient Egypt sort of theme things and Agatha Christie and so and mysteries and murder mysteries and stuff so yeah I probably again really enjoyed this when I did it quite a few years ago but I just haven't reached for it so again I think it's time for it to go I have no idea what the piece quality is like I honestly can't even remember like doing it but I definitely did um, but yeah I think someone else who's maybe got kids and or even just really enjoys these sort of mystery puzzles will probably have a great time doing this one. We're up to the last stack of puzzles and we're nearly done. So let's get through these. So the first one is a Mr. Bob puzzles, uh, wooden puzzle. They're actually Australian um, and it's 252 pieces and it's called mum. There's a cow in the yard, which is a very hilarious name. Um, and I actually did this puzzle and another one of theirs, like I sort of reviewed them and tried them out in a video. So if that fits in the cards, I'll pop that up there. Um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this one. Had a great time doing it. Um, it was a lot of fun, very like whimsical, silly, fun image by an Australian artist. Um, and yeah, I just enjoyed the whimsy pieces in it. Uh, yeah, they always, yeah, they're great quality, lovely, really thick wooden pieces. Um, some of the probably th like thickest wooden puzzles I've done, I think. So yeah, very thick and very sturdy and strong, great quality. All, uh, all their artwork is by Australian artists. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed it. But you know, I figure I'm probably not gonna do this one again. So uh, I'll probably end up passing it on to uh, maybe someone at the puzzle swap in Sydney or in Australia um, and you know, let some other Aussie puzzlers try them out, especially if they haven't tried it or they're a big fan of Mr. Bob, maybe they wanna do this one. So yeah, I think this one is off to a new home soon, hopefully. And then we've got some other wooden puzzles here too. So I've got this box here, which actually has two wooden puzzles in it. So this is by a brand called Puzzle Up and they actually sent this to me quite a long time ago. And I tried them out on Instagram and um, I think both of the puzzles, let's see. I mean, there'll be images here if I can find them. Um, so there were actually two puzzles. One was like a little Mercury one and one was like the Golden Gate Bridge and I think they were both round from memory. It's been a while, can you tell? So they're actually both in here in their little sort of fabric drawstring bags. Um, yeah, not my favorite images. Like, I mean, you know, I, I'm not that into photography and like uh, the colors of this Mercury one are a bit eh, but they were quite fun to try out. I enjoyed like the whimsy pieces. They were pretty fun. Um, but the other thing with this company is that uh, they have like an app, like a virtual reality app. So once you've finished the puzzle and you have it out on your table, you can like 
use the app to sort of like take a uh, like capture it and then it brings up a really cool like uh, informative like little video and animation stuff so that bit's quite fun like the sort of interactive side of it um, so yeah not just a just a wooden puzzle I guess so yeah I think that was kind of an interesting idea um, but yeah not my favorite like images but enjoyed it enjoyed trying them out I can't actually remember what the piece count of these were I might have to like look it up and put it on the screen but um yeah so I think it's time to let these go because I don't I haven't done them since and I kind of almost forgot I had them so yeah why not pass them on to someone else who might enjoy them especially someone who maybe hasn't tried wooden puzzles or or the opposite loves wooden puzzles and wants to try some more out so yeah I think someone will have good fun doing these two um and then we've got a 500 piece one here not a wooden puzzle just a regular cardboard puzzle by the brand Lang and what's it called uh, cat, it's part of the cats in the country series and this one's called grandma's quilt and yeah just a really cute kitty cat puzzle um, this was my first time trying this brand and I was actually quite impressed like the I think from memory the pieces held together pretty well even though they were like a paper backing and they had a quite a nice feel to them with like a sort of like linen textured finish and a little bit glossy but I think yeah it was like for the price of this it was pretty affordable the quality is quite nice so it's yeah quite surprised um but I just haven't done this like puzzle again and I sort of a bit over the image like it's cute but like I said earlier I've got a ton of cat puzzles and ones that I like even more than this now so you know might as well pass it on to someone else who's going to enjoy a cute cat puzzle um the only thing with Lang is like I, I would happily do more of their puzzles but I just haven't found many of their images are sort of like appealing to me unfortunately but I mean I guess I'll definitely keep an eye out if I see one I like I'll probably I would definitely try it again um, but yeah great quality but just uh, time for it to find a new home and then next we have a couple here from the brand Aquarius um, they're kind of like similar they're both 500 pieces and they have like uh, you can probably tell why I got it the most ridiculous crazy <laughs> Uh, cat image on it like pizza cat in space with laser beams um, I don't even know what this is called like I tried finding the name of this on the next puzzle but like it just it doesn't have the name it just says random galaxy 500 pieces couldn't find the actual name so we'll call it pizza cat in space I don't know um yeah it was, it was okay um the pieces are pretty glossy uh, I think it was a kind of looser fit or did it hold together I can't even remember but it was pretty so-so and um, the pieces let's just open it up and have a look because I can never remember oh okay yeah pretty normal size pieces brown cardboard back kind of yeah that's right they're like thin to medium very glossy but I actually did like these like a couple times each just because I was doing them for puzzle battle and just because I wanted to do them again but I actually found myself getting bored the second time I did them because I should pull this one out this one as well um, the colors actually like are a bit boring like they look it looks colorful at a glance but then apart from rainbow it's like quite I mean this one's better than the other one but it's like a bit dark and all the fur of the cats like the same and it it ends up being kind of boring to be honest so yeah despite the sort of novelty and what it looks it looks fun to begin with it's like not that exciting after doing it twice like so I don't really want to do it again um so yeah that's the main reason why I'm kind of getting it out of my collection because I just yeah I'm not going to do it again and not that in love with the quality it was like eh, okay <laughs> nothing to write home about um, do I have anything else to say about this one? Yeah, not really. I think that's about it. Wish it had a name on the box, but it doesn't. And yeah, and so same reasons for this pretty much. Yeah, exactly the same quality. Um, done it a couple times. Um, actually, the first time I did this, it was missing 11 pieces and I actually wrote to them. So I give them credit for this. They actually, uh, like I messaged them on Instagram and they got back to me straight away and they arranged to send me a brand new, new one. So. They were actually very good with their customer service, even though then I think they're based in the US and they yeah, arranged with like a local company here in Australia who stocked their puzzles to send me one. So yeah, really, uh, yeah, really good customer service. So very impressed. Um, and so I have done this new one and it had no missing pieces. So that was good. But yeah, again, um, don't think I'm going to do it again. Uh, that's pretty much it. 
And then we have another one here from Aquarius, which I did a while ago, and it's quite a fun image, but actually um, it was quite tricky and there were a lot of false fits. So I think the rainbow gradient part was fine. Oh, I forgot to say, this is called Wonderful Wieners, 1000 pieces, and it's a uh, panoramic puzzle, obviously. And yeah, a uh, crazy hot dog gradient puzzle, but yeah, it's, it's very fun and silly. I guess a lot of their puzzles, images are like this. Uh, kind of quite novelty, but yeah, I don't remember the pieces being like the greatest quality. I think they had a pretty loose fit and were pretty glossy. And yeah, and I had a lot of false fits, especially on this like hot dog bun, because there's so much of it that looks like the same. Um, and so just, yeah, I don't know, I had fun doing it. Glad I did it, but you'd think I would keep it because it's like a rainbow gradient and it's just ridiculous, but I guess I just kind of got over it and I just haven't done it again. So let's let someone else enjoy it, I think. And then I've just got a few more here and then we'll be done. Um, this one is a bit of a pity because it's by, is it Remarks, Remarks? I never know how to say this. If you know how to say it, let me know because I never get it right. 1000 pieces and it's called Oceana. Um, and it's a really pretty image. I love the image, hence why I got it. This beautiful, yeah, just really colorful, fun ocean themed image. Really love it. I think it's beautiful. They have some really lovely images. Um, but I just did not enjoy the quality. It actually was pretty much the same as Seiko. I looked down because there is a Seiko puzzle here. Um, yeah, just the pieces are like, they're kind of a fun, irregular shaped like pieces, but the fit is like terrible. Like, they don't hold together at all. The cardboard's really glossy and kind of thin and bendy. Um, like, yeah, they feel kind of flimsy and there was heaps of puzzle dust. So kind of a real pity about the quality. I just didn't enjoy it at all not my thing but yeah which is a shame because it's such a pretty image so yeah I feel kind of like sad letting it go but then I'm like I'm just not going to do it again because I was so frustrated by the quality so yeah a bit of a pity but maybe someone else will enjoy it and then yeah uh, as I was saying Seiko so this is a Seiko one and it's 550 pieces and it's part of the wild whimsy this is what bothers me about Seiko well, one of the many things. They have like the name of like the series it's from and it shows you on the bottom the other, like the whole three in the collection, including this, but it doesn't tell you what this one's called. It's just, it's part of the Wild Whimsy set, but then I guess it's the underwater scene. I don't know, it doesn't have a name. Anyway, pretty much the same uh, quality as the Remarks, Remarks one. Um, yeah, really cute, lovely image. They have some wonderful artworks, which is why I'm, silly and have bought a whole bunch of Seiko puzzles which are now in my to-do pile which I'm now like kind of dreading because the, the quality is probably going to be not to my liking um, but yeah the pieces again just really kind of a bit bendy and glossy don't hold together well and heaps of puzzle dust yeah very I guess both feel very cheap so yeah I don't know if they're made by the same manufacturer they might be they're both made in the USA not sure who makes both of them, but they're very similar. Um, so yeah, so which is a pity because yeah, I think they both have beautiful designs. So, but yeah, maybe someone else will enjoy it. And then we're up to the very last puzzle of the declutter video. Um, okay, this one was gifted to me like ages ago and did it on my Instagram and it's a little wooden puzzle. It comes in this little, little box and I think you can buy them on Amazon and ooh. And it's actually, so the brand is called, okay, I have no idea how to say this, Bussy Foco, no, no clue. And uh, this one's like this whale image, one of these sort of uh, intricate designed, like patterned wooden puzzles. So a bit, I guess it's sort of replicating like things like Uni Dragon and things like that. But yeah, I mean, it's quite cute how it comes in this little box and smells very woody and campfirey, very nice. I mean, it only ever comes with this tiny mini image plus a, outline of it on the back which is just bizarre but anyway um but yeah there's nothing wrong with this um it was a fun little puzzle to try out i don't know how many pieces it is actually oh i lie actually one it has a picture on the back but it's about the same size as the other one so it doesn't really make much difference but it says 346 pieces um and it's called iridescent cetus cetus which i think is sort of like another name for a whale Anyway, but it's a whale image and um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Lovely little wooden puzzle with 
fun little irregular shaped pieces and cute whimsies. Um, I've definitely done ones that are nicer quality, but nothing inherently wrong with this one. I just haven't reached for it again and have lots of other very pretty wooden puzzles and puzzles to do. So yeah, not my favorite design, but I was, you know, grateful to like try it out and enjoyed it. So now it's time to pass it on and let someone else who wants to try a wooden puzzle have a go at this one. In the comments below, let me know what you thought of this video. Are you also a declutterer when it comes to puzzles? Are you like me with a big collection and you need to do a big uh, declutter every now and then to make room for more puzzles? Or are you more a minimalist puzzler who has just a small, very neat selection of puzzles and tends to sort of uh, get rid of your puzzles as soon as you do them? Yeah, I guess let me know what kind of puzzler you are in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. And for more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. And you can find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.